I am working on a song by Hargreaves called The Night I Appeared as Macbeth. One of the things about this type of song is that it is led by the lyrics and the orchestra has to work incredibly hard to punch out a tune. If you listen to the way that Mary Lloyd, for example, delivers some of her smuttier songs, particularly towards the end of her life, the whole thing has descended into a monologue and the tune is almost irrelevant. Now, I always hope of having it if you fancy it. I do. If you fancy it. I do. That's understood. And suppose it makes you fat, I don't worry over that, cause a little of what you fancy does you good. Mary Lloyd made a few recordings <laughs> um, at the end of her life, but her voice uh, sounds harsh after all those years in smoky halls without a microphone. We have to imagine um, the, the atmosphere to get an idea of just how brilliant she must have been. Uh, and there's an element of rap to it. There's more of a tune in that other song um, that's actually a parody of an American show, show song, song. And that lifts the piece, I think, a little bit more. And every little movement has a meaning of its own. Every little movement tells a tale. When she walks in dainty hobbles at the back round here, there's a kind of wibble wobble and like then the John is followed in her trail cause when she turns her head like so something's going don't you know cause every little movement tells a tale she must have been sensational Mary Lloyd's death along with that of Little Titch in the 1920s probably marks the end of the mature musical of course it lingers on with people like Max Miller um but uh, it's a theatrical form that had a brief and brilliant life. It embraced politics, art, commerce, and indeed law. Uh, it spoke for ordinary people. When McDermott sang his song by Jingo, which we talked about in the previous talk, it was discussed in the House of Commons and on the pages of the Times. So that probably uh, gives you a good reason for um, the song. Um, to lovely black eyes oh what a surprise and the surprise is that somebody's been discussing politics and somebody else doesn't like it so you avoid that subject this is a song which was adapted uh, uh, from another song by charles coburn and coburn was the man with the hit as I walk along the Bois de Boulogne with an independent air, you can hear the girls declare he must be a millionaire. You can hear them sigh and wish to die. You can see them wink the other eye at the man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo. The first halls opened in the early 1930s, in the early 1830s, but it was not until Morton's and the Canterbury that the format moved away from the pub piano and into the sort of variety theatre that we now know and that uh, Frank Matcham made his own with great designs like the uh, Palladium, which was described as, uh, uh, as some great pit, as some uh, huge empty palace, uh, which of course can easily be filled today. But think, then it was without a microphone. Uh, and the mature, uh, music hall format, I think, still dominates our TV schedules at a weekend, particularly on a Saturday night. Uh, brief appearances of artists, um, a variety of different turns, and audience participation. This defines exactly what we think of when we are thinking of music hall. There's also a move towards family entertainment and more respectable fare. But the comic songs um, pushed the boundaries. The comic song possibly takes over from the more sentimental songs in popularity. Um, uh, the, the sentimental ballads that used to dominate the early years of the music hall. It, it's the comic song which keeps the edge. I think it was the comic song that kept the musical alive. What I want to do is to look at a couple of examples and set out what I think are the key features. The most important is a sense of knowingness. 
this can make a song arch or even camp. But it draws on an idea that the performer is conspiring with the audience. No one did that better, incidentally, than Max Miller, who I said I would talk about a little later. Uh, Max Miller leant out on the footlights, reaching out to the audience. And he was the one, incidentally, who developed the image of a disapproving manager just out there, who somehow or other is reading the newspaper or distracted, and therefore this gives Max the opportunity to uh, do some of his jokes from his little blue book. Um, Frankie Howard, Larry Grayson, Julian Clary, these are all comics. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Ah, oh, who developed the idea um, that there are characters we never see who somehow define their performance. Ooh! I thank you. And because the audience is conspiring with the performer, they are engaged, they're involved in the action. And the artists took the trouble to fully identify with their audience. These people share the same background. I mean, you know, the swell character, even the swell character is often down on his luck, like his audience, like Burlington Bertie or the tramp who lives on Trafalgar Square with four lions to guard me. Fountains, Fountains and statues all over, all over the place, place and, and the, the metropole staring me right in the face. face. I'll own it's a trifle drafty, but I look at it this way, you see. If it's good enough for Nelson, it's quite good enough for me. The cost singer, who's the sort of ultimate um, poor character in the music hall, uh, and indeed is a, is a barrow boy, was talking about what his audience knew and probably shared, they, they did the same thing. Um, you know, what a great view if it wasn't for the houses in between. Vesta uh, Victoria is, is sort of female equivalent of this, you know, uh, she's always doing victim songs like, um, there was I waiting at the church, waiting at the church, waiting at the church. When she finds out that she gets dumped, her fiance explains that he cannot marry her because my wife won't let me. She also did a great song about a girl whose fiance gets stolen by her mother. Now I have to call him father. But oddly, she might best be known for a fairly innocuous sounding song, um, which she, when her delivery became uh, saucy, even racy, Daddy wouldn't buy me a Bow Wow. As for racy, in the 1930s, um, there was a great song. In, in the 1950s, there was a great song, um, which Kenneth Williams recorded. And I remember Ka Danny LaRue uh, doing it too in the good old days with great aplomb uh, about a marrow competition. However, the same vegetable potential had already been explored by Harry Champion. My old darling said to me, you must be hungry, Joe. Is there anything you fancy? I said, fancy, don't you know? I like pickled onions, I like pickled lily. Pickled cabbage is all right with a bit of cold meat on Sunday night. I can grow tomatoes, is, but what I do prefer is a little bit of cucumber, come, 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 a little bit of cucumber. The Hargreaves song picks up uh, the Vesta Victoria victim thing, but it also tells a story. There's less of a sing-song feel about it, so it's very much a performance. What's interesting about these comic songs is how even when there's a chorus, the words change subtly, subtly so that it stops the audience singing, singing along. along. There's another um, song by Harry Champion. Uh, about a girl called Matilda. It, 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 it's really a sort of saucy um, picture postcard song. So that's what we'll give you. Um, and uh, it, it, the speed of delivery uh, that um, Harry Champion uh, uses is simply staggering, and all this without a microphone. Matilda and I went to Brighton one day and she stood on the shingle with me. The wind was so windy, got under her clothes and blew her right out to the sea. I saw her come back with a smile on her face and she looked like a drowned old pup. She came up again to the top of the foam and I said, that's your second time up. Don't do it again, Matilda, don't do it again. 
You've done it now twice. Number three, you'll find it's unlucky. Just take it from me. Don't kick. You've got to be quick and swallow the raging men. Drink up a lot to your son to pop and never come up again. Matilda, she went to a fancy dress ball and she played an original part. She rubbed herself over with raspberry jam and she came as a raspberry tart. I gave her a kiss and I couldn't get loose till I struggled like having a fight. I said if you wanted to make an impression, you jolly well done it tonight. Oh, don't do it again, Matilda, don't do it again. The raspberry jam has been made of glue, it cannot be helped because I'm sticking to you. My luck I knew was up, I'm sorry to lose my brain. I can't get about when you're stuck to my snout, so don't do it again. I'll never forget on a day I got wet, there's only your humble to blame. Matilda insisted on washing the shirt, as I'd only want her to my name. She took it along, and when I put it on, I discovered that I was a jay. She started all over from bottom to top, and I wrote her a letter to say, Don't do it again, Matilda, don't do it again. The dick is as stiff as a rusty nail and the back of it's wagging around like a tail. My shirt doesn't have a do toddle around and explain. It's stiff as a pin and I can't tuck it in, so don't do it again. Now the Macbeth song was sung by Billy Merson and there's a recording of him doing so. This was a performer who made a name with a great song about a Spaniard. But he's otherwise best known for his association with George Formby Sr. And in our version of the Macbeth song, we therefore pay tribute to Formby's son, the lad with the ukulele from Wigan. And as for Billy Merson, well, his hit song about the Spaniard was popularized in America by a man called Al Jolson, so that was really the end of that. Merson also appeared in a few films, but I fear that the artists of the music hall did not adapt well to the changing media. And whether they dabbled in film or not, other than Chaplin and Stan Laurel, really, it was not very successful. Um, it might have been the cinema, or it might have been radio, that dealt the death blow to the music halls. But it might also have been the steady move towards respectability away from innuendo, away from the ribald, away from the earlier drinking songs that kept the entertainment focused fully on the audience. Thank you very much.